jasonbloodchurch.org coming to you today. God bless, got my Jesus shirt on. Hope you guys are having a great day. Wanted to do a study um, here today that, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to become aware of that Judas Iscariot um, will return again someday, His at least in spirit. So we're going to look at that. We'll start off in uh, the book of John in the New Testament. And we'll start out at verse six, excuse me, chapter six and verse 70. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you 12? And one of you is a devil. So that's interesting. He's talking about the disciples and the last part. And one of you is a devil. All right. So let's just sort of dig into that. This is Judas Iscariot um, who betrays Jesus and turns him in. Uh, as you know that you probably know that story. His name has 13 letters in it. 13 is an evil number. Of course, most people know that. He also called Jesus master at John uh, 13, 13. Um, and so, interestingly enough, um, John 13, 13 has 13 words in it, consisting of 39 letters, which is 13 times 3. So, you know, God is a... This just shows you God loves math, okay? And so, you know, what a beautiful way to look at this. But... It's interesting that God never had a 13th, um, you know, disciple. But if you count Jesus, um, Judas Iscariot, Iscariot was the 13th. And, of course, he's later replaced by Matthias. So sort of backdrop there. But we see here he's, he's, he's a devil. Now, um, you know, the word devil is, it, you, is not the word that is demons used at Mark 134. It's, the, it's actual... He's not the devil, he's a devil. So just to be, you know, specific on that, and we're going to see a little bit more about him in the future here in a minute. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, love to have you. Thumbs up on the way out, all that great stuff. Let's look at John chapter 17, not very far away. We'll look at verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gaveth me I have kept. So speaking of the disciples again. And none of them is lost, but, which one? The son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So now they've called Ju uh, Judas Iscariot the son of perdition. We know him to be the Antichrist. So he's a devil. And now he's being referred to as the son of perdition, which you, you, you know, you know that term. If we go to 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, and we look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. This is the day of Christ, which is twofold, right? That's the rapture and the second coming. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of who? The son of perdition there in verse 3. And of course, just like just like any devil, they want, if you see in verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship that he, as God, sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Certainly talking about Satan there. Um, when he comes back in the reincarnation in the Antichrist body. But the spirit of Judas Iscariot is a devil. He's the son of perdition. So that's interesting. It sounds like he's going to come back again, at least spiritually speaking. Here, according to the verses we, we just looked at. Let's take a look at the book of Acts. Um, let's take a look at Acts. Chapter 1, and we'll go verse 25. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. So we know Judas Iscariot did, did fall, indeed. That he might go to his own place. Wow, what, what's that mean? So, obviously we know Judas Iscariot is burning in hell. So he must have his own little compartment or place there. In verse 26, you see the, repla you see the replacement there that, that the uh, lots fell upon Matthias to replace uh, you know, Judas Iscariot. So, this guy um, who, who worshipped Jesus as the Messiah, loved him, followed him around for years, betrayed him, as we know, turned him in, and now he's a devil himself, and he's burning in hell, and he will, his spirit will return. Wow. And it shows you just sort of, you know, what people can be capable of, even if they supposedly love the Lord. Not only that, he's calling himself Messiah. As he comes back as the Antichrist, he wants to be worshipped. So what a turn of events. If you look at 
uh, Revelation, if you look at the fifth seal, uh, the fifth seal that will be opened, um, it's, it's Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And of course, in verse 10, they're crying out, like, you know, for their blood be avenged. And uh, we're wearing white robes. And, you know, this is what the spirit of Judas Iscariot is capable of. And what a man who falls away from following, worshiping the Messiah. He was with the Messiah and went to unbelief and to trying to become God himself. And that is the evilness that we deal with in our world today. With the New World Order, with the elites, with the people that want to control us with the people who will bring in the Antichrist system, with the Antichrist and the spirit of Judas Iscariot himself. Anyway, just a scary message, but a, a, an eye-opening message. A lot of people don't know this message. God bless. Uh, someday the, the spirit of Judas Iscariot will fill up the Antichrist body, um, hopefully very soon, because that means we're going home. God bless. If you're not saved, get saved on the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen.